Good afternoon. My name is George Burdock and welcome to the webinar. Title of the webinar is What is it? Is it a food, a drug, dietary supplement, or a cosmetic? My name is George Burdock. I'm a consultant and have a uh, consulting business in Orlando, Florida. Uh, we provide uh, safety and regulatory advice and documents on uh, US and worldwide regulations for food and feed ingredients and dietary supplements. Uh, please note that this material is covered by copyright. And uh, let me read the disclaimer to keep the lawyers happy. Concepts and examples discussed in this lecture are for illustrative purposes only and do not constitute regulatory advice. The examples provided herein may not apply to your specific situation. Please contact us for an analysis of your particular circumstance to determine the best pathway for your product and team. All right, what to expect over the next 20 minutes or so uh, is that uh, words have meaning. And we're going to learn the lexicon of the regulator. The, uh, we'll learn that the label drives the various categories. Uh, that regulation is based on intended use. Uh, we'll learn the definition of the various regulatory categories, and we'll learn that safety is a relative concept. If you look at the literature and look online, you'll see a lot of uh, talk about what a product may be, that it's a food additive, or it's grass, or it's an herbal supplement, a nutraceutical, a functional food, and so on. But these are all what the regulator calls fanciful terms, such as nutraceutical, functional food, cosmeceutical, uh, they don't have any regulatory meaning. The regulator can only uh, discuss with you in regulatory terms, such as drug, food, food ingredient, food additive, grass, dietary supplement, or cosmetic. These fanciful terms are marketing terms, and there is no regulatory description of what these terms are. A big part of this lecture is to let you know that science, a substance is regulated according to its intended use. That is, what does the label say? If the label indicates a therapeutic intent, it's treated like a drug. If it's labeled as a food, it is treated as a food. If it's labeled as a dietary supplement, it's treated as such. Except in the most egregious circumstances, the functionality, uh, except in the most egregious circumstances, is the functionality imputed or assumed by the Center for Food uh, Safety and Nutrition. That is, don't paint stripes on a donkey and try to call it a zebra, like this gentleman is here. All right, what's the definition of a drug? According to the statute, the term drug means articles intended for use in the diagnosis, cure, mitigation, treatment, or prevention of disease in man or other animals. The standard of safety for a drug is a benefit versus risk paradigm. That is, a drug is safe if, if it is used safely. And that's because uh, physicians are allowed to use drugs for off-label uses. All right, since the term drug means something that will diagnose, cure, mitigate, treat, or prevent a disease, these five magic words plus the word disease make a substance a drug. However, we know foods can cure diseases, such as scurvy, uh, so long as some vitamin C is added to the diet, or mineral deficiency, or malnutrition, or, or for that matter, food cures starvation. But does this make foods or their ingredients drugs? Congress realized this, and so uh, they added uh, the Section C, saying that, uh, drugs are articles other than food intended to affect the structure, any function of the body of man or other animals. So there was a carve out here. Uh, this was uh, illustrated uh, most eloquently, eloquently in Nutrilab versus Swiker, uh, where the court said it is well established that the definitions of food and drug are normally not mutually exclusive and that some products such as coffee or prune juice are undoubtedly food, but may be consumed on occasion for reasons other than taste, aroma, or nutritive value. 
All right, the definition of a food means articles used for food or drink for man or other animals, chewing gum, and articles used for components of any such article. Now let's take food uh, that is something like meat or produce, such as fruit and vegetables. All right, so what people might call natural foods. The standard of safety is that there is a presumption of safety, that the food is not ordinarily injurious. That is, if it was ordinarily injurious, it wouldn't be a food. But Congress put in not ordinarily injurious because some people can't tolerate certain foods, such as in cases of allergy or gluten intolerance. Well, what's a food ingredient? According to the CFR, food additives and grass substances includes all substances, the use of which results or may reasonably be expected to result directly or indirectly either in their becoming a component of food or otherwise affecting the characteristics of food. The standard of safety for a food ingredient is a reasonable certainty of no harm. All right, what's the definition of a dietary supplement? This is a rather long definition, but uh, it obviously excludes tobacco. But it could be a vitamin, a mineral, an herb, or botanical, or an amino acid, a concentrate, metabolic constituent, extract, or so on. But the important part of the definition of a dietary supplement is that it's a dietary substance for use by man to supplement the diet by increasing the total dietary intake. That is, uh, you can get certain substances from food, but maybe you can't get enough by eating a particular type of food. Uh, some people like to uh, take uh, uh, extra doses of lycopene, which is a good antioxidant. But to get the dose they want, they may have to uh, eat several pounds of tomatoes per day. Uh, the solution here is that you can buy uh, tomatoes that have been extracted to take this lycopene out. The lycopene is put into a capsule and you can get your daily dose, uh, the wanted daily dose of lycopene. Uh, in addition, uh, the dietary supplement is a product that uh, is not represented for uh, use as a conventional food as the sole item of a meal or the diet. This was added because uh, the, the thrust was that people shouldn't take just dietary supplements as a whole meal. The safety standard for a dietary supplement is a reasonable expectation of safety, not a reasonable certainty. Uh, the definition of a cosmetic is that a cosmetic means articles intended to be rubbed, poured, sprinkled, or sprayed on or introduced into, like a breath mint, or otherwise applied to the human body or any part thereof for cleansing, beautifying, promoting attractiveness, or altering, altering the appearance. Uh, these and any articles or any components that go into a cosmetic are also considered cosmetics, except that the term cosmetic does not include soap. Soap is controlled by the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Uh, the standard of safety for a cosmetic is adequate sub substantiation of safety. Well, so looking at these safety standards again, a drug has a benefit versus risk paradigm. That is, a drug is safe if used safely. For food, there's a presumption of safety. It's not ordinarily injurious. For a food ingredient, there must be a reasonable certainty of no harm. For a dietary supplement, a reasonable expectation of safety. And for a cosmetic, and adequate substantiation of safety. So people say that uh, FDA is a labeling and safety agency, and throughout this lecture, you'll find out that uh, that may be a true statement. But in any event, if you look at the intended use, which should be on the label, that dictates its functionality, which in turn dictates the regulatory category and the safety standard. And I'll be providing some examples for each of these situations. Again, well, uh, here is the list, the cascade, if you will, or the uh, flow chart as to what happens. And we'll just turn these uh, titles on the side here so we can have a something like a spreadsheet. So if we look at a label and it indicates it's going to diagnose, cure, or mitigate a disease, if it's got any of the five action words we talk about, talked about plus the word disease, then this is a drug. It has therapeutic intent. It's a drug. The safety standard is benefit versus risk. And examples would include aspirin, chemotherapeutics, 
antibiotics, anti-dandruff shampoo, not shampoo, that would probably be a cosmetic or a soap. But if it says anti-dandruff and has any hint that it's going to have a therapeutic effect, then it's a drug. Massage oil would be uh, probably a cosmetic, but if it's for pain relief, it becomes a drug. Aromatherapy may just be used for aesthetic purposes, but if there's a claim like it will improve mood or something, this may make it a drug. All right, if, the, uh, if there's a label or sign that says these are articles used for food or drink, it's a food. The regulatory category is a food. The safety standard is that it's presumed safe if it's not ordinarily injurious. This would include apple, cabbage, or poultry. If the substance has a label that indicates the substance is intended to affect the characteristics of food, like cinnamon, uh, this would be a technical effect. It's a food ingredient. And the safety standard is a reasonable certainty of no harm. Examples here would be like preservatives, buffering agents, texturizer, or, or flavoring agents. If the uh, label on, a, on a, a container says the substance supplements the diet by increasing intake, it's a dietary supplement. And the dietary supplement is, uh, if the product supplements the dietary intake, it's a dietary supplement ingredient. The safety standards are reasonable expectation of no harm. And this would include things like lycopene, cranberry juice, flavonoids, and so on. Uh, importantly, a dietary supplement must have been part of the diet historically, may not be chemically changed, cannot be a synthetic version, and must be swallowed. It can't be applied to the body, used as a mouthwash, administered rectally or intravenously. Uh, and interestingly, for the safety standard, no scientific expertise is needed to determine safety. If it says on the package, this is for cleansing, beautifying, promoting attractiveness, or altering appearance, or words such, such as these, it's a cosmetic. Functionality is for the promotion of attractiveness or alteration of the appearance, again, a cosmetic. The safety standard is an adequate substanti substantiation of safety. Examples here would be toothpaste, but there couldn't be any claims about uh, antibacterial activity. That would make it a drug. Uh, face creams, douches, breath fresheners like Tic Tacs, these would all be uh, cosmetics. So here are all the different categories. Here are all the different substances compared uh, on a face-to-face -face basis. Now, for uh, we, we talked about what you say on the label is very important. Words, words do have meaning. Uh, if you remember when you were a kid and the other kids meant to tease you about something or said something nasty, you go home and complain to your mom and your mom would say, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt you. Well, mom was wrong. Words do have meaning. What you say on that label is what you will get in terms of regulations and safety requirements. Again, let's talk about safety standards. A drug is a benefit versus risk paradigm. A food has a presumption of safety if it's not ordinarily injurious. And a food ingredient it must have a reasonable certainty of no harm. A dietary supplement must have a reasonable expectation of safety, but no, there is uh, no scientific involvement to uh, demonstrate safety, or there's no examination by scientists. And a cosmetic must have an adequate substantiation of safety. So words have meaning. We understand that the lexicon, uh, the lexicon of the regulator, he can only talk in certain uh, about certain things and categories like drugs, dietary supplements, and so on. The label drives the various categories. The regulation is based on intended use. Uh, we understand the definition of the categories, and we understand that safety is a relative concept. And something I saw in the uh, Federal Register the other day is that the very act of representing a product for food, drug, or cosmetic use constitutes an inherent implied representation of its safety. This was written in 1975, quite a bit before the dietary supplements 
but had it been written later, I'm sure they would have included dietary supplements in that list. Thanks for joining us today. For more information, you can contact us at info at burdockgroup.com. Thanks again and have a good rest of your week.